Well, former New York State Senator Malcolm Smith, he was found guilty today on bribery charges. Smith facing up to 45 years in prison after the authorities say he tried to fix the Republican line in the 2013 May oral election. Uh, not only bad, but I never understood where, what he was trying to get going there. I mean, talk about a, a snowball's chance and you know where. Okay, let's bring in Jessica Proud. She is a Republican strategist, PR expert with the November team. She was recently a spokeswoman for the Astorino gubernatorial campaign. All right, guys, I want to talk about the first issue. Um, you saw what uh, Governor Cuomo did recently. He's uh, threatening uh, petulance and famine on Albany if he does not get the reform package he wants here for Albany, uh, making it very clear here that lawmakers better ban outside incomes or enact new rules for complete disclosure of outside pay. Governor even threatening to shut the government down in the process. Either pass my budget or shut down the government. As you recall, President Clinton had a fundamental disagreement with Speaker Gingrich. And that's what it came to. Either pass the budget or shut down the government, and they shut down the government. I was there. It was ugly. But sometimes, ugly is necessary. Change is disruptive. And transformative change is highly disruptive. And make no mistake, this will be highly disruptive. So I will not sign a budget that does not have an ethics plan as outlined in my proposal that addresses the current problems in the system. Forgive me for being cynical here, Mr. Mayor, but you? didn't he shut down the Moreland Commission and now he will shut down Albany if they don't give him what he wants for reform? I, I know some of us in the media get jaded by covering the world of politics, but does it seem a bit fortuitous after what's happened in the last two weeks that now gambling in River City, we're going to end this thing? I mean, come on. I'm shocked, shocked <laughs> that you're not taking the comments of a politician at face value. Uh, look, I I'm just glad that he's pushing it as a priority. There is a crisis of confidence in Albany as a result of what's happened with Speaker Silver, now, uh, now Malcolm Smith, uh, a series of other uh, transgressions by uh, Albany legislators. And for a democracy to function, there has to be some basic level of trust that the people we elect are actually working for the common good, actually working on behalf of the people they represent. I actually think that most of the people in Albany and most of the people in lots of other governments are in fact doing that. But when you have these, spe these specific examples of yep. transgressions, it undermines the whole system. And we need to have a better set of rules in place which enable the average person to look at Albany or look at any other government and say, those folks are working for me. Andrew, you look like you're in pain. Yeah, uh, but I want to I want to hear from Jessica first because I, th I have a feeling she may say most of what I'm going to say. I have to stop laughing first. I mean, truly, the governor has a remarkable ability and willingness to say whatever it is he wants and have his actions not back that up. I mean, this is like putting the fox in charge of the hen house. He actually uttered the words today that if you can't trust Shelley Silver. Who can you trust? I mean, the problems in Albany have been going on for decades. It is no secret to anybody. And he, with this threat coming out now, saying he's not going to pass a budget until he gets ethics reforms, these are empty threats that we've seen before. He said the same see, thing about gerrymandering, I, I and then came through and passed the worst gerrymandering le legislative redistricting. I gave Jessica an opportunity to make the arguments, and she, and she swung and missed on it. Well, I, I, uh, I, 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 here's the thing. It, my concern is that what we're actually going to get will have the veneer of reform without actually reforming anything. That he's getting out ahead on the PR stuff that's going to say, look, I'm, I'm cleaning everything up, but not much is going to change. First of all, we're not addressing the LLC loophole, which I know Jessica yeah. knows fully about. Of course, but this is the hallmark the governor, of his administration. The governor used that to raise $30 million. million. Dollars. Yeah. $45 million. $50 million. <laughs> uh, and, and, and it's also like the governor's reforms are focused on lawyers and, and lawyers disclosing, which is an issue, but there are more than just lawyers serving in the assembly or serving in the state senate let's and you know i don't think there's enough teeth in what we're hearing from governor cuomo for it to actually be effective i think he's looking to pass something and call it reform tom you've always said the biggest thing if they were going to clean up albany it would be some of the the charities or what are set up as shells uh, mm -hmm. that really are funny, mm -hmm. funneling money, whether it be to candidates directly or indirectly to family members or whatever else. Well, you have a New York City councilman that was recently arrested 
again uh, <laughs> because the allegation that he set up uh, Councilman Wills, sham nonprofit, that's, that's the hook. And you set up the nonprofit, you, you run your campaign, you get campaign finance dollars, and you have your best friend be your campaign manager, and you split the money. I can't be any clearer than this, Richard. I, I have to be honest with you. No offense to the mayor. I'm a fan of his work. He's not in this category. Half of these folks in Albany are poverty pimps and crooks. And it's not going to change. And to, I, there's no other way to put it. And Jessica's right. She hit a grand slam. What Governor Cuomo is doing is is basically I, maybe he's apologizing for the uh, the Molin the um, the the commission Moreland, yeah, Moreland. the Molin commission that he recently just disbanded. You got to give Cuomo credit. I mean, you talk about a three card Monty. Homeboys but, but, like but you know what? Don't look but, over but, here. But, look but, over there. But here's my point. I come full circle to what the mayor said, which is, forget the motivations for a second. And I'm as much of a cynic as any of you. If at the end of the day. I find out where every elected official is making their money, where they have to do complete disclosure, or you shut down the outside sources of revenue, or heaven forbid we pay them more because you pay them, you don't pay them 80 grand a year, and now you expect them to work a full-time job, what was originally a part-time job, though I know the public would never go for that, but at least make them say where the money's coming from. And more than that, so all sources of revenue, not just that. I mean, where's the wife getting the money from? You got. I mean, you want to run for office, you have to have an open book of transparency where every dollar is coming into your pocket. That is doable. Uh, Other states have it is. that. And let's not make the perfect the enemy of the good. Uh, it's not necessary to solve every single problem in order to solve some of the problems. And we should distinguish between sort of two different forms of corruption. You've got the acute corruption, which is quid pro quos in exchange for dollars, uh, which is generally illegal and should be illegal, and, and we can confront more effectively than we do right now. And then you've got the sort of chronic form, which is perfectly legal, and it's all the problems in our campaign finance system, including the LLC loopholes mm -hmm. that you mentioned. It's what's allowed under Citizens United. It's the degree to which uh, sources of financial support in campaigns yep. can be concealed. That's a much tougher nut to crack. But just because we can't do one doesn't mean we shouldn't do the other. But you have to look at also, you already have disclosure. They have to fill mm -hmm. out, like, it's mm -hmm. like a 25-page mm -hmm. packet. Part of what Shelley got tripped up on is the fact that he mm -hmm. wasn't listing everything of where he was getting the revenue from. But they, they're required to fill that out. It's, it's the member items. It's the campaigns, what happens with publicly financed campaigns. But you know it's what, the Jessica, per diems out. that they get money to go up you're, to. You're from. a lawmaker. You're, an, you're an assemblyman or a state senator, okay? And you are still an attorney. You got a shingle. Who in their right mind is coming to you to represent them as an attorney if four days a week you got to be up in Albany? You, nobody's going to you. They're paying you for that's, access that's and influence. That's a separate Please. debate, Richard. And you want to talk about the problems in Albany. Don't just stop at the financial corruption. Look at what happened today with them having to settle $500,000 in taxpayer money because of the sexual abuse that was going on up there. It is a culture of corruption in Albany that they need to fix. They need All ethical right. people well, up there. The person that has promised um, to be a part of the reform process is the new speaker, Carl Hasty. Uh, he taking over after a long time. Speaker Shelley Silver obviously forced out here. I, there's two interesting things to this. First off, I, I think they're going to regret here fast-tracking this thing. They should have taken a few more days. I'm not saying there's anything wrong, but we already know he was mentioned in the Moreland Commission report. We already know a couple other unflattering headlines. Maybe it ends there, okay? Uh, but I think they should have taken a few years. What I thought was interesting is when they did a vote, w other than Hasty, there was a few votes, but the person who had the second most votes was Preet Bahara. So uh, how much of an appetite do you think there is? Because there's a pretty big freshman class, and there's pretty much pretty big uh, new crop of lawmakers in the last two, four, six years to actually do it differently. Because I think that's the best chance to fix Albany, not from the longtime veterans, but from the new folks who say, I want to come home to my district and everybody thinks I'm a crook by definition. Listen to Dominic. A lot of people feel the way he does on this, right? Maybe not Brodsky. But, but, but my point is, is that the best shot that Preet Bahara is the white knight here? Uh, look, uh, I'm not a member of the assembly. I've never served in Albany. Uh, I know our local delegation, and I think they are fine people who are talented and capable and in public life for the right reasons. And when you devote hours upon hours to a field, you want to feel proud of what you're doing. You want to feel as though you're accomplishing things that are meaningful. And at least the folks that I know in the assembly would very much like to have a change in culture 
so that they feel as though merit-based work is going to be rewarded and understood, mm -hmm. and so they feel that the folks they represent will have confidence in the work that they're doing. And so I don't know who voted for Preet Bharara in, in, in that ballot, uh, but I can tell you that, I, at least among the folks I know, there's a desire to see a change in the culture of Albany so they can do the people's business. But part of that, I think, requires sometimes bucking the leadership, which the Assembly Democrats have been completely reticent to do. They went into that meeting to reelect the Speaker. No one even asked the question about the fact that Shelley was under investigation, which was public knowledge for everyone to know. Well, well, so you well, have Jess, to, you can't just you. talk about I'm reform. You've got to have actions that back it up. And they're all afraid to do it because it's well, a punishment-based well, be, be system clear. there. We all know there's an open secret right now that in the Senate, uh, Mr. Skelos uh, mm -hmm. might be the next, uh, and as we heard from Preeper Har to stay tuned, um, the office refuted the rumors right now, but it doesn't necessarily have to be getting a phone call from U.S. Attorney to mean that he's looking into it. There's, uh, you know, I know a lot of people bet good money here that mm -hmm. Dean Skelos might himself have more than a few questions to answer. What, do you, are you saying that there needs to be top down? All leadership across the board is going to need to be pushed? I think it's incumbent upon individual members to raise these issues with their leadership. It is the, their responsibility. You know, when I heard Catherine Nolan coming out, who was in the running to become Speaker, say, it's the fault of the Albany, the all male Albany press corps that has created the culture of sexual harassment in Albany. I, I mean, that's absurd. Well, give, me a, give me a wrap. I want to ask a question. This is not a Republican, Democrat. This is just, you've handled this and you've run. How does Bill de Blasio in the state of the city say his signature issue or his game changer issue on public housing? I'm not saying a good, bad idea. It's not, how does he say that and two hours later the governor goes, not so much. It's not happening. You didn't check. The, the, the land's not for public use here. It's not going to happen as it related to, to the Queen's uh, uh, commercial property that he was discussing at the time. How does, how does that happen when that's the whole Megillah out of your speech or the big lead, and then two hours later, there's two schools of thought, that he just wanted to get it out there, which doesn't make a ton of sense to me, or two, he and the governor aren't talking and they can't get on the same page on this, but you would have thought they would have checked before he would have said, hey, everybody, here's my game changer, and then it doesn't even make the print the next day when they said, no, it's not. You're looking at me, but I think you need a psychologist on the panel. <laughs> really, to right? That you mean like that's they crazy, did with the isn't subway it? System? Yes. Isn't it not? <laughs> it is crazy, right? They didn't the storm with the subway system. Richard, it's, it's real simple. It's real simple. And I've known the governor a very long time. And I, maybe I shouldn't say this publicly, which means I'm no, going to it. say it. Yeah. <laughs> when it comes to Andrew Cuomo, check does not play well with others. Just like they say, uh, what, frenemies or whatever, yeah. you know, with these uh, reality shows. No matter... You're the mayor of New York, and you find out the subway system is shutting down 15 minutes in advance. Anything that de Blasio does, Cuomo is going to one-up him, because in Cuomo's mind, there's only one okay. player in Blasio, New York, and it's him. Would have it's not Bill de Blasio. If Bill de Blasio wants to make something the signature issue, and he doesn't have the authority over the property in question, the least he should do is run it by the governor's office to say, I'm going to throw this out there. And he says, you do, I'm going to smack you down. That's the minimum you do. Otherwise... You say, I checked with the governor's office. They told me that this was in play or not. You don't, I mean, his headline got killed before he even got to the daily in the morning. That I, would imply confidence at but, City but Hall. Let, let's see where it goes. Let's see where it goes. You got too many softballs. Let, let's second. see where it goes. Remember, they were at loggerheads when it came to universal pre-K. Pre yep. Uh, ultimately, um, uh, the governor did provide additional funding for it. It wasn't exactly the structure that de Blasio originally sought, but the bottom line is yep. there's been a huge expansion. So I, I don't think we should prejudge that there won't be a productive outcome to what seems at first to be uh, a disagreement. You certainly got precedent on that side. Okay, when we come back, we're going to head over to D.C. Democrats threatened to boycott an appearance by the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Do they have a point, or are they making a mess even worse? Stay with us.